Hello friends, you know lately I've been thinking. I've been thinking about Halley's Comet and how it'll soon be inbound. Yeah, I know it's hard to believe, but it's now been 35 years since the comet made its last appearance, its last perihelion or close approach to the Sun. Well, I got to looking the other day and I found the comet has just about reached its farthest point from the Sun now, and after hanging around out there for quite a while, it'll begin to fall inbound once again. You know, as of May 2021, the comet is at a distance of 35 astronomical units, or about three and a quarter billion miles from the Sun. That puts it out a little beyond Neptune. Well, the thing is, the aphelion of the comet, its most distant point of the Sun, is listed at 35.08 astronomical units. Well, it's at 35 astronomical units just exactly now, so you see the comet's basically there. It's just about reached its most distant point from the Sun. Well, technically, it'll reach that aphelion in December of 2023. But the very nature of eccentric orbits is such that the years around the aphelion are just spent kind of just hanging around out there. It's like when you throw a ball up in the air and it slows down, and just as it comes to a stop up there, just it comes to a stop and then it starts to fall back down. But there's that little moment there where the ball kind of hangs there. That's kind of how the comet's doing right now, too. Well, if you've ever, ever studied Kepler's law, then you know why this is so. You might remember that Kepler's second law states that a line segment joining an object in the sun always sweeps out an equal area during an equal amount of time. So, when the comet is in close to the sun, it must be re moving really fast to sweep out a particular area in a particular amount of time with this very short line segment. But then again, when it's distance, when it's distant from the sun, it hardly need move at all to sweep out an equal area in an equal amount of time with its very long line segment. Well, don't need to worry too much about that though. The whole point is that right now, Comet Halley is at such a distant point that it's almost sitting still. After December 2023, it'll begin moving inbound again. But at first, the inbound motion will be almost imperceptible. You know, the comet will stay beyond 34 astronomical units distance until 2032. So, it's at 35 now, it'll stay up beyond 34 until 2032, so that's quite a while to hang around out there. And it'll remain at a greater than 30 AU distance, and thus beyond Neptune, until 2041. Well, after 2041, things will start to pick up a little, as the comet really starts to fall inward toward its next apparition and its perihelion or close pass by the Sun in 2016. 61. Well, here's hoping we can all make it that long so we can see the comet again, you know? Because the 2061 pass is scheduled to be a good bit better than the 1986 apparition was, but it's not going to be as good as the 2134 apparition will be. Well, I'm holding out for 2061, but whether I can make it to 2134, 2134, well, who knows? Well, anyhow, back in 1986, when the comet last returned, I was just a kid, and the comet Halley mania was pretty strong. In fact, the first line of this little book I have is, months before Comet Halley becomes visible in the night sky in the winter of 1985 to 86, the world will be suffering an epidemic known as comet fever. I think there was a bit of comet fever in 1986. You know, there were all kinds of news stories about the comet, of course, and most of them got the facts at least partially wrong. There were many elderly people interviewed who claimed to have seen the comet back in 1910, and their claims were obviously regarding the Great Comet of 1910, which is an entirely different comet, which just happened to come around at the same time. Well, although the 1910 return of Comet Halley was one of the very good returns, the tales people told, old people told, of seeing the comet in daylight clearly referred to the Great Comet of 1910. And most local newspaper reporters weren't interested in accurate back then, though. And I don't think they are now either, as far as I know. But anyhow, there were all sorts of tales being told in the newspapers and on television by people who had supposedly seen the comet in 1910. Like I say, most of those tales they were telling were a little confused. Well, anyhow, though Comet Halley has been an important comet historically, there are, of course, a great many comets out there, and most of them come and go almost with, with almost no attention being paid. Well, oftentimes, there is no hope for anyone in the general public to even see a comet because the light pollution has gotten so bad in most populated areas. You know, light pollution has an additional, but not always understood effect, and that's the way it reduces familiarity with the sky. So you see, 
many people have never seen a dark sky, and so they're incapable of even finding a comet when it comes along, even if they drive out of town to go looking for it, out away from the city lights. You know, I witnessed this last year when I was out there in the country observing Comet Neowise. I was parked along a little country lane, and I saw many people come along and park there and look for the comet as well, but most of the people just left too early. They left before the sky was even good and dark. It was too bad if they'd waited another 20 minutes or so. I think they might have been able to see the comet because once it got good and dark last summer, Comet Neowise was pretty easy to see. Well, anyhow, all the attention that's paid to Comet Halley isn't entirely unwarranted though because it has an orbit that pretty much ensures that every once in a while, every third pass or so, it'll be a good or even a great comet. The comet has also spawned the Orionid and the Ida Aquarid meteors, though I've never had much luck with either, either of those showers. And you know, the history is of the comet's observation and the prediction by Halley of its return make it really important to us humans. Well, anyhow, I hope we can all hold out to 2061. I'm trying to get a little more exercise in, get myself in shape so I can make it another 40 years. It's still 40 years away, but that next perihelion of Common Halley in 2061 will be here before we know it. And don't forget, as of right about now, and particularly after December 2023, Comet Halley really is going to be inbound again. So let's all hold out for it and look forward to 2061. So good luck.